My question is, I have all kind of mortgage, credit card, car loan, line of credit, you know. So as you're saying, like seven years to pay my mortgage, according to what my income I get after I pay all my bills, you know, nothing left. So it's kind of uh, tough to pay mortgage in seven years, you know. What uh, my question all right. So here's what I'm hearing is that, and I hear this often, I hear this often that after I pay my bills, there's nothing left. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Okay. yes. May I ask a couple of questions? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. All right. So Daniel, you can pay all of your bills with your income. That's a yes or a no. Uh, I can. Yes. yes Thank I you. Can. Thank you. Now, do you ever have to dip into your savings to pay your bills? Yes or no? After I pay everything, I don't have any savings. Okay, that's a yes or a no, Daniel. I'm trying to help you here. No, no. no. Okay, thank, thank you, thank you. I got it. I got my answer, okay? Now, okay. here's what I'm talking about, Daniel. Most people yes. who come to me have, say that I have no money left over. So what they need to do is do a budget form, okay? How much money do I have coming in? And if I pay the minimums on all of my debt and all my bills, if I pay the minimums, how much money will I have left over? Okay. That is very important. The reason why I ask you this is because I asked a young lady not too long ago, the same thing. And so when I sent her a budget sheet, she filled out the budget sheet. And when she filled out the budget sheet, then she's had to do it three times. Do you know why she had to do it three times? Here's why. Because she could not believe the fact that when she put down her income and just paid the minimums on her bills, it was showing up that she had $2,000 a month left over. She didn't know where that money was going. So if we really want to know, most people are not tracking their spending. They get their income, they pay their bills, and then they continue to spend for whatever. And I'm not saying that's abusive. I'm not saying that they're being irresponsible. I'm just saying that's just the way it is. But what if we did this? What if we put down exactly how much it costs for us to live and look at how much money we had coming in? I think we might come up with a different number. And what I'm trying to say is you don't need a lot of money to save on the interest. But most people are looking at is the amount of money that I have left doesn't make a dent on the principal that I owe. It doesn't move it that much. And then they get discouraged because I don't have enough money to actually see a significant reduction in the principal. Does that make sense, Daniel? Yes, sir. Okay. So if we have any money left over, let's try to figure out how much interest we could save with that small amount of money. Okay. Yes. I'm going to put an example on And are you in Canada? Yes, sir. All right. Do you know I have Canadian clients? So our program does work in Canada. Okay. So here's an amortization schedule, Daniel. And I hope that you can see this. We're going to do $200,000. Now, I know that the interest rates in Canada are hovering around 2% or less. I'm still going to put a 6% mortgage in here just to give this example. All right. And now here's what we're looking at, folks. The payment on this is $1,199.10 at 6%. When we get down to payment number one, I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger so it will fill up the screen a little more. There we go. All right. We have $199.10 going to principal, $1,000 going to interest here. So here's what's going on, Daniel. On the very first payment, $199.10 goes to principal, $1,000 goes to interest. How fair is that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. But if we look at payment number two, because we paid down our principal by one hundred and ninety nine dollars and ten cents, we owe less money now. So the amount of interest that we pay on line two is less and our interest cost on line two goes all the way down to nine hundred ninety nine dollars <laughs> because that dollar we did pay now goes over to principal. Now we have two hundred dollars and ten cents going to principal. Here's how this works. This is just simplifying a very complicated system here. And this is how it works. If I make my payment in January, 
Number one, where I have $199.10 going to principal and $1,000 going to interest, I can actually see by using this amortization schedule, my February principal payment, which would be $200.10. So, Daniel, if I can see that I would owe next month $200.10, do I have to wait till February to give the bank that $200.10, or could I give that money to the bank in January? Daniel. I don't understand where that thousand came. Though. Okay, the thousand is the interest that you owe on the loan. Right. So out of every payment, money goes to principal and money goes to interest out of every payment. Right. So in this particular one, out of $1,199.10, the very first payment, $199.10 goes to principal and $1,000 goes to interest. Does that make sense now? Correct. All right. And the second payment, $200.10 goes to principal and $999 goes to interest. Make sense? Correct. Yeah, okay. All right. So here's what I'm talking about. We make our payment in January. $199.10 goes to principal. $1,000 goes to interest. But what if I want to take a look at my amortization schedule and give the bank the $200.10 early? They're looking for me to pay it in February, but let me give them this $200.10 in January instead. Can I do that? I think yes, you can. Yes, and when I do, I'm paid down to the principal balance on line two because all of that $200.10 goes to principal. None of it goes to interest. So if I'm already on line two, when I give them that money early in January, my next mortgage payment for February is now on line three of my amortization schedule. Do you follow? Right, I follow. Yeah. All right. So what just happened? I just eliminated one payment off this amortization schedule for only $200.10. Payment number one is now touching payment number three. And all I did was give the bank an extra $200.10 early. I'm disrupting their ability to charge me interest by disrupting the timing mm -hmm. that I give them the money. Now, here's what just happened. That $999 on line two just got eliminated. I never have to pay it. It was canceled. It was supposed to be due, but because I gave the bank the money early, I canceled that interest payment to move down to the next interest payment. I just saved $999. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Now, here is my next thing I want to go over. If by adding an extra $200, I save about $1,000 in interest, guess what? What if I decide I want to pay half the $200? I pay $100. It saves me $500 in interest. Is that still worth it? It does, yes, sir. It doesn't do much for my principal, but it saves me a heck of a lot of money in interest, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But if I don't have $100, I have $50. I'm cutting it in half again. That $50 saves me $250 worth of interest. Still worth it? Not yes. And $25 would save me half of that $125. Do you see where we're going with this? Yes, sir. So even though you're working hard, paying your bills, don't discount the fact that you only have a small amount of money. Let us help you to figure out what your small amount of money would do in creating interest savings for you, because the more interest you save, the faster you pay off the debt. And that thing starts to compound after a while by using small amounts of money, getting rid of huge amounts of interest that you don't have to pay. And therefore, by cutting interest cost, you pay the loan off faster with small amounts of money. So, Daniel, I hope that's helpful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Don. Thank you. You, you are so welcome. Thank you for coming thank, to the stage. Thank you, Don. Thank you. But Don has some valuable information that can contribute to the quality of a person's life. And it only costs you a few dollars. He says, it's his book. Why not get that? I'm going to go through the pill method myself with some of my investment properties. So I'm going to link up with uh, uh, Don and then I'm going to sit down with him, show him my investment portfolio and see how I can eliminate interest.